Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zeph from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come down to see a friend of mine, David Fryers. If you're not familiar with David Fryers, he's renowned for making a bushcraft modular pouch system that's designed to fit in the myriad of packs, backpacks, haversacks, etc. Now in this particular video, what we're going to be looking at is a Frost River haversack and how David has created his bushcraft modular pouch system to fit inside of there. Also, this video is part of a continuing series I've been filming with David on this particular visit down as well as on previous occasions and we looked at a myriad of different pack packs and also how his modular system fits into those if you haven't seen those videos what I'll do I'll put a link below in the description highly recommend you, you check those out because like I said we should talk about a different myriad of packs we look at carry more packs uh, foul raven and the list goes on so like I said links to those will be down below in the description so in this video like I said we're going to be looking at a Foss River have us out so Hope you enjoy the rest of this video. So David Fryers. Here we are again. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> and you, mate. So, what pack are we looking at in this video? Right, now this is a, um, a Frost River. Now, Frost River make quite a few shoulder bags, haversacks. You know, in their world, I think they're shoulder bags, but in the bushcraft and outdoor world, we sort of call them a haversack, don't we? Because um, that's what they're traditionally known by. But um, I'm always interested in what other people use or put inside their haversack. And, you know, it varies quite a lot. My personal opinion, what I like to keep inside my haversack, are sort of the, the core essentials, fire kit, uh, first aid, possibles kit, uh, water, a cup, knife, saw, you know, them sort of things that you, you need on the go all the time. And you can take this from one pack to another pack and to another pack. And you know you've got them core essentials. So, yeah, I'll show you the pack. So it's Foss River quality. You know, it's nice heavy duty canvas. This is quite a small pack. It's not big at all. Um, but another thing is I think that people put too much in the haversack. They overload it. It becomes, you might as well have a rucksack. You know, what's the point of, you know, filling it all up and you've got this weight on just on one shoulder um, to try and keep it as light as possible. Um, so, yeah, quite simply. And I don't think these are actually that expensive, to be honest. They're not that, you know, Frost River stuff is quite expensive, but these are not too bad. So on the outside, I've got a pair of uh, Hestra um, gloves. Uh, I've had these for a few years. Um, they're the Skullmans and uh, quite thin. They're expensive, you know, um, you're paying for a name on quite a bit of it. It's most normal gloves would do the job, but uh, so, but I've got them. So if we open it up, we'll go through the contents. So first off, I've got a lighter and a um, fair CM rod. Now this is a Strike Force. Um, it's a good, thick, solid uh, striker. Works really well. Loads of sparks off of that. Um, and then in the butt end of it, to have like a sure fire, you know, get a fire going. Nice orange, so you know, you're gonna see it if you drop it, you know, you should be able to find it quite easily. And then we have an Exotac, a um, bit lighter. And these are completely waterproof, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. And I've had it for ages in there, to be honest, so it's mostly getting a bit low on gas. So they stay on the outside, on a carabiner, I can take them off put them on and then chuck them in there when I'm not using them. We're not going anywhere. Um, let's, do with, let's do the knife. So in the back I've got a small canvas pouch that I made and at the moment um, I've got, I've had this for years. I used to have it in my carving kit but it works quite nice. A small little silky 120. Cracking, you know, silky. Once I you know, went over to silky, the, the backhoes, even though they're great, you know, saws, you can't yeah, anyone who tries it, they cut through wood, like they think, and it's like it's hard to go back really to a backhoe. Um, then we've got um, a newish knife. It's from Rob Evans. Um, one of his knives, and I've been using this for the last few months. After I got it from the Wilderness Gathering from him, and uh, I really like it. And I've carved spoons with it, uh, done all sorts of jobs. Uh, really, really quality knife maker. And who is that, Rob Evans? Rob, Rob Evans, yeah. Um, he's got his name on there, you can see. And that's a leather sheath that I made myself for it. Just 
sort of traditional type of uh, fur sheath. And the only other thing in here, I've got a Ben Orford um, spoon knife. Just because, you know when you're out and you just want to do a bit quick carving, you know, just it's, it's lightweight, it's, it's easy in there and you can just do a quick spoon. So that's all the tools. And this is obviously one of the materials you work with, yeah, right? Yeah, this is the, the canvas material. Um, so I don't mind mixing up a bit of canvas and iron, depending on what the purpose is for it. You know, for this sort of job, it works brilliantly. So I don't mind mixing it up. The rest of the stuff in there is the nylon material. So what we've got, we've got a, a 500 mil uh, water bottle and cup. It's an interesting water bottle. I'm not seeing that one. Yeah, this is an old uh, MSR uh, titanium one. It's old, old. Um, um, it might not even been for. It could have been a fuel bottle. I don't know, but you know, I'm all right still. I've been using it for years. So. <laughs> <laughs> time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. But then that goes nets in, a, in a, an alp kit, small, I think three, four hundred mil cup. But it's nice. You know, you want water with you. If you're just going off for a walk, you've got five hundred mils of water and a cup. It's always handy, you know. Next up, so we're using three pouches, which are the. the X small pouch, which I use for the carry more bags, and these are the low uh, small box pouches, and I've got two of them. And if I lay them out, you can sort of see um, they're very similar size, these are slightly deeper. And but, if people are watching and they haven't seen any of the previous videos, yeah. do you want to just very quickly talk about the materials yeah, that so you use to make these? The, the material is, is a UK sourced. Um, thousand D nylon, um, extremely tough, lightweight, and really sort of, sort of, you know, flexible in a way. They're not stiff and horrible. Um, and I try and get everything from sort of UK manufactured source, and I've, I always have a constant supply of this. And it's just going through the, you know, most pouches are made of polyester. Polyester is a great, nothing wrong with it, but when you want something that is tough, extremely lightweight. Um, then you need to have nylon, and nylon's really hard to get hold of, you know, quality, you need a good source of it. And the the Kedora the, the nylon I get is they supply it to the military for, you know, when they're manufacturing whatever they're made of, rucksacks or whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's really good. So you use quite chunky zips, don't you? Yeah, and I always use good size eight zips, um, and I've used, been using these zips for a couple of years now, and they've never failed me. So yeah, I could go for YKK, and I mostly will do in time. Um, but it's, it's, you know they work really well. I've got a good source of it, so you sort of stick to it for the moment, you know. Um, so what we got? So we've got possible's patch. So if we go through there, so we've got an Exotac lighter. And it's all based on the uh, Zippo lighter, but they don't leak fuel, so that's the same fuel that's been there for months. Um, we've got a. Uh, Exotac, uh, I think it's called the rib spill. I can't remember what spool. It says it on the end, got my glasses on, but you can see it there. And this has got duct tape. You can see I've you've used all the duct tape was on it. So I've got duct tape on there, but slightly shorter, which is a bit weird, I thought, but I thought it was all the same size. And then inside there, we've got a needle and obviously the thread on the outside. And it's, you know, the amount of times you do need a needle and thread when you're out, surprisingly. Next up, a multi-tool, it's the Leatherman Wave. Yet again, another tool that you use all the time. Just for picking up pots or whatnot, it's a tool that's, you should always have in your kit one way or another. Any multi-tool, it doesn't have to be a Leatherman, but... Um, just a, a little match case. Yeah, it's always good to have redundancy in it. Lighters and matches. Then we've got a lighter with some more duct tape wrapped around it. Small bit of cordage. Obviously, it always comes in use. It's amazing how often you need to grab a little bit of cordage and some wax paper that uh, Descati makes for getting fires going and stuff like that. So, 
that's, that's what I call a posh sauce pouch. In here we've got, yet yeah, again, but I, I've had this kit for absolute years and it's like I think a Swedish um, uh, sewing like repair kit. And I've had it for years and it's get, it gets used and you know, it's just something that I'll always keep in the kit. Um, next up we've got some of the, um, can you see that on there? I think it were glasses, but it's the bug repellent stuff. Nordic summer. Yes, yeah, yeah. You have to be careful with this stuff though, because I noticed in the, in the summer it got so hot, it was dripping and melted and come out of it. I can't even open it, so it's mostly stuck. But yeah, it doesn't like the heat. When it gets hot, it will start dripping out of there. Next up, a bit of fire start, uh, knife sharpening. So we've got a... I think this is a uh, spider coat. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and a small little like um, stone, not stone, but diamond. Diamond. Yeah. And a little bit of like the old compound, you know, to put on the uh, the strop for stropping, because you can just use, you know use that because that's like a suede type material and another little thing that I've had for years is this little brass it's almost like a, an old school multi tool and inside there it's just got a few tools which you then put across there screw it up and then oh nice yeah you can use it's got an oil in there some tweezers um, you know a little, little drill bit um, so yeah it's quite a cool little thing But these little things that I like to keep in the kit anyway, they don't need to, you know what I mean? I can get the multi tool to do, you know. You know, I can mostly get away with not having that really, um, not have that, but there are only small little things that I like keeping them in now. And then, let's put this over here. This is my fire kit. So I've got the old Hudson Bay tin and it's filled up with a load of char cloth and a flint and steel. Um, sort of a classic thing really and it's for having your kit. Then some matches, here again. And in here is a small, and I bought this off a friend um, and it's just a nice little kit all ready to go you see. Little fire kit. It's all quite compact stuff, you know, it's not taking up loads of space. And uh, yeah, that's what I keep inside the three pouches in there. So then we've got a first aid kit. So it's just a small pouch I made. And in here I've just got a sort of paracetamol, aspirin, um, some savlon, loads of plasters and bandages and all stuff like that. All the stuff is sort of, you know, it's quite, it don't take up much space, but you know, it's not a massive first aid kit. It's just sort of, you know, sort of the bare essentials, what you need, you know. So that's all in the main kit. Next up, compass. Silver compass. Always handy to have in your kit. The amount of times the compass is like, come in so useful when you're on a hike or you're walking and you know you just need to get that bearing of work out where you are. Uh, a max position and a notepad. I always have a, a spoon with you. <laughs> and um, just another thing I put in there which is just a, a pen off a sort of neck knife. Because I always like, I always find most the, the, the knife you're going to use the most is the is your neck knife. You know, once it's there, you're just going to keep it there and grab it and use it, put it back again. So, quite an essential item, really. And that is about the contents of all inside that um, small uh, haversack. So, so to recap, this is obviously just for things when you're around camp and yeah. kind of basic anemones you're going to need access to. Yeah, so if you if, give you the situation, if you've like loaded up your rucksack, um, instead of doubling up and all that, instead of having a, 
you know, all these other items in your pack and like that sharpening kit and the you know, fire kit. These are items that you're going to grab quite often, aren't they? So they, they can use these things more than anything else. Um, so you can put them in your rucksack, and I do quite often, depending on what sort of loadout I'm doing. But majority of the time, I'll have it in some sort of haversack. It may not be this one, it might be another one. But these are the items I'm going to grab, because I know I'm going to have fire, you know. I know I'm mostly going to have to sharpen the knife, you know, just give it a quick strop. You know, Leatherman tool's always handy to have. You know, even the, light, the, the saw and the knife, they're always going to be used. They're on the, on the belt straight away, and then you just got your water. So they're basically the most used items you can have in your kit. So it'll be great to see you start packing this away yeah. and then loading it up back into the haversack. So we can kind of see that actually you can get quite a bit into the haversack, obviously using a combination of other yeah. pouches and your own. Well, it's quite a lot of kit there, just to go in this small little pack, isn't it? You know yeah. What I mean? it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 um, it's amazing that you can get in there, but yeah. There's always space for a bit a few more items in there if, they, if you want to put them in there. You know, there's no need to pack it all the way out. And you've still got room, haven't you? Yeah. Let's get more stuff in. And even when you shut it up, you know, I'm not actually, I'm going right down to the smallest buckle. And there we go, really. And it's not, you don't want it too heavy. You don't want too much weight in there, and that's quite easy, you know, to chuck over. Still have your rucksack on. And you can easily accessible get the bits you need to access. Okay, I'll see you later, Dave. See you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> but yeah, there you go, really. And that works with the you know the system of, of you know like the bags we've been used showing this weekend. Is that you know. If you just want, I, a lot of times I use this at home. If I'm in the garden and I want to do a bit of woodwork or get a fire going, whatever it is, I just grab that bag, take it into the garden, and I'm sort of ready to go, really. So, Dave, just to kind of wrap up then, so I have mentioned at the beginning of the video that on this visit down to see you, we'll be looking at a couple of other packs yep. um, and also the kind of modular power system that goes into those bigger packs. And obviously, on previous occasions that we filmed some time ago, we have once again looked at other packs then and kind of variations of your system there. So, in terms of those that are watching, what I'll needlessly uh, do is I will put a link below to your Shopify store yeah. uh, down below. So obviously you can find out a lot more about the pouches that you do. Also, I'll put a link to your Instagram and obviously people there can find out about the myriad of things you get up to anyway. And also I'll put a link to your YouTube channel because you yeah. do put out your yeah. own content. Um, if people have any questions uh, in regards to the pouches that you do and the systems that it kind of entails, would it be okay if people reached out to you? Yeah, just either Google David Fryers, I'll go to my Instagram, send me a DM, um, YouTube, I won't bother really, uh, and, um, or an email, I'll put an email address so you can uh, contact me. So any questions, because I do get questions like what will work best in this you know, rucksack uh, or you know, what 
I need this, I've got what it is, like an aero press, what, you know, what pouch will fit that. And so I sort of try and help people out as best as possible. Because the one thing I do want to wrap up on is something we have stressed in previous videos, and that is you're constantly doing a lot of research and development Always. with your pouches, you know, seeing what works, what doesn't work, and making appropriate modifications. Yeah, all the time. It's uh, because it's something I love, enjoy doing. I'm always out, and um, if I have an idea for something, I don't just you know, make it and put it on the shop. I use it and I use it and I use it. And when I'm, you know, when you're using it, you alter it and change it. So if you develop one item, I might have to make four, five, six of them to I get it right. And then once you've, you know what you want, then you've got to work out the best way to make it. And so, but when I come out, you know, it's part of what I enjoy. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucky in that way. Dave, I really do appreciate you allowing me into your space uh, to document kind of what we've shown in this video. And um, guys, that's a wrap for this video. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zed. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Really do appreciate you watching all the way through. As I just mentioned, I will put links down below to uh, David's uh, website. You can find a lot more about the pouches there. His Instagram, where you can see the myriad of things that he gets up to. And number three, I'll put a link to his YouTube channel where he puts out some great content. Highly recommend you go check those three links out. If you have any questions or queries in regards to these uh, pouches that you've seen in this video, then I would highly recommend you approach him either through Instagram or his website and message him through there. And last but not least, I will put links below to all the other videos that I've done with David, where we looked at different packs and also how his modular system fits into those packs. Guys, once again, really do appreciate you watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next instalment. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. For myself, Zell Outdoors and David Fryers, peace out.